This episode is sponsored by Loot Crate. Use the link in the description to sign up and I'll see you at the end of the video for an unboxing. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer and I've got a pumpkin. It's Halloween. From the outside. Yeah! Oh my! He's on fire! Anyway, I was just sitting here going over some of my favorite fan art that I've gotten over the years, like this one. It's actually one of the first pieces of fan art that I ever got. How about this one from the Alpha Sapphire Nuzlocke I did on my gameplay channel? Speaking of the gameplay channel, this is one of my favorite pieces of PB and Jeff fan art. And see these little jackets we're wearing? They're from a game called Asagao Academy, an entire dating sim game created about the normal boots guys. And while we're on the subject of Asagao Academy, I've gotten tons of different fan art from that game as well. And how about Zelda Month? Which is uh, coming next month. Just a little reminder. Hooray! Yay! It's really cool to see people get inspired by something and then turn around and use that inspiration to make something else. Another example, a fan named Kestrel loved Zelda so much that he made these Majora's Mask masks out of leather. And though, yeah, he's 12 and he made these. When I was about that age, I was making movies on webcams with my friends. One of them was called James Blonde. I would show you a clip of it, but it doesn't exist anymore. And frankly, that's fine with me because it was, just take my word for it, it was not good. It was bad. And since it's almost Halloween, I thought it would be fun to go over my top 10 favorite spooky slash horror fan made games. So roll the video. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll the video. Up first is an Undertale fan game called Slender Tale. While I've always intended to play it all the way through, I've only played about an hour or two of the original game, so I don't completely understand what's going on, but as far as I can tell, Slender Tale starts where the true ending of Undertale leaves off. It looks like we need to get through this door here, but it has a password lock on it. So I guess we're gonna go around this little house and find all these pages with numbers on them. Wait a second, Slender Tale? Looking for pages? This, this is kind of reminding me of something. But maybe I'm just getting deja vu. It's probably nothing. Entry number five. Six, okay, so it, it we're, we're getting our. We gotta. I gotta write this down. What was that noise? What was that? What the heck? No! 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 What? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Do you like Luigi's Mansion? Do you like fan games? Well. How very convenient for me that that is apparently the case. Cause I have one. Luigi Insanity. It starts off with Luigi getting a call from Professor E. Gad, who appears to be in some sort of trouble at a nearby mansion, so Luigi goes to try and help him out. It's really short and simple, in fact, it almost feels like a proof of concept or a demo more than a complete game, but it is really fun to play a 2D sprite Luigi Mansion themed game. And it certainly doesn't hurt that the overall presentation is really well done. It even has a few pretty spooky, startling moments, despite you not being able to die outside of these scripted segments where you have to hide from the e Evil Ouija ghost. Okay, the bath or the toy? The, the toilet? Really? The bath it is, I guess. He should be fairly hidden if he just lays down on the floor. You know what? That's just not acceptable. It's just Luigi, to a certain extent, there is survival of the fittest and that's, that's just not good enough. I will miss you, but I cannot weep for you. Bye bye. Yeah! I genuinely relish any opportunity I get to talk about The Elder Scrolls. It's one of my all-time favorite game franchises, and it also has one of the best modding communities out there. If you can think of something you want in an Elder Scrolls game, chances are you can find a mod for it. And if you can think of something you would never want in an Elder Scrolls game, chances are you can find a mod for it. There's even a lot of user-created quests. Enter Into the Depths, a custom quest for Skyrim. Well, there's a dead guy outside of the cave we're supposed to go in. That's totally not foreboding at all. You will not be forgotten, dead adventurer. I will complete this quest in your name. Also, give me your clothes. Thank you. Into the Depths has you delving into a cave haunted by the ghosts of miners that previously worked there. It's up to you to figure out what went wrong and to put a stop to it. It's not pee yourself kinda scary, but it does have some moments that are genuinely startling, and the further you go into the quest, the more bizarre things become. Well, it wasn't easy, but I eventually did it. I completed the quest, and now I'm taking my new best buddy, Dead Adventurer, out to celebrate.
All right, this is our stop. Freya, get this man something to drink. Woo! Get cropped. <sighs> you know what? I'm feeling a little bit tired. Let's just take a break and play some Majora's Mask. Wait, what the heck is this? <laughs> I like it. It's improved. I never really got into the Five Nights at Freddy's craze. I played the original game, but only for a few minutes. I get the formula, tension, stress, build up, and then the payoff is a jump scare. It's certainly not a bad game, but it's not exactly my thing, despite the fact that I do find the idea of haunted Chuck E. Cheese robots to be incredibly unnerving. I tried the fan game, The Joy of Creation, but it didn't go so well for me. What? Oh, come on. I don't even understand what I'm doing. Oh, no. Something's happening. Can't move. This isn't even fair. I don't even know what I'm doing. Something's gonna pop up and it's gonna scare me. But <laughs> I don't understand how to play. I don't understand how to play. Even almost. I don't know what I'm doing. But then I tried The Joy of Creation Reborn, and despite it not being finished, it's a bit more up my alley. It's basically a free-roaming Five Nights at Freddy's game where you have to pick up certain items before the time runs out. It's separated into four different levels, each with a different character. The first two, Freddy and Bonnie, are pretty good, and it's certainly frightening to hear a giant animatronic murder machine chasing you down a hallway. But the short time limit and the fact that in order to restart, you seemingly have to kill yourself after you fail the objective kind of ruined the magic for me a bit. But if these mechanics are eventually used in the unreleased story mode, I can see it really working. The final two levels, though, are a bit better. Foxy is scary if for no other reason than he's infinitely harder to avoid. All right, let's start this up here. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. And Chica's level really changes it up, throwing you into a forest and giving her more Slenderman-esque behaviors. Incoming jump scare in three, two, one. My turns reach the third level, they're no cycle! Well, I was gonna put Escape from Lavender Town on this list, but I can't seem to figure it out, so I guess we gotta pick something else. <laughs> Wait a second. Escape from Lavender Town? Uh. I get it. Up next, we have a Silent Hill-inspired fan game called Silent Hill Alchemilla. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. It was made using the Source engine, and despite using a few of the same sound effects, it manages to replicate the Silent Hill style incredibly well. There's even a few shots that seem like they were taken straight out of a Silent Hill game. It even has endless amounts of locked doors. Locked, 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 broken lock. Doesn't even have a handle? Seriously? And the ability to inspect random, meaningless objects with equally meaningless and pointless dialogue descriptions. It's a dog. It's cute. It's a dog. It's not as cute. It's a bag of balls. Some of them are blue. It's a fake fruit bowl. Why do I have this? It's not even... It's not even open. All the fruit are individually wrapped. If you're looking for an over-the-top, in-your-face horror game, then this isn't for you. But if you're a fan of the Silent Hill series or want a good psychological horror game, Alchemilla, Al Alchemilla, whatever it's, whatever it's called, is definitely worth checking out. Amnesia The Dark Descent was a revolutionary horror game when it came out in 2010. It had a free expansion called Justine, and also a pretty long list of fan-made custom stories, one of the best being The Great Work. In The Great Work, you play as an archaeologist named Charles Longden, who's studying a castle in Germany with his partner Jane. You wake up one night to the sound of an explosion, and Jane has gone missing, so you've got to try and find her. Jane? Jane? Where are you? I heard a monster just a minute ago. Oh. Jane, can you can get you something? Do you, do, do, do you, need, you need anything? Jane? 
Well, at least her lantern's in great shape. That's good news. Not only is the great work well made, it's fairly long. It has custom monsters, haunting, and even distressing scripted segments. Heck, if I didn't know any better, I'd assume it was an official expansion. And it really hit the spot for me. I didn't realize just how much I missed this game. I missed running away from monsters, not being able to see anything, hiding in wardrobes for five minutes before finally gathering up enough courage to come out, only to jump back in seconds later. And I even missed the sound of going completely insane. Ah, so relaxing. You are going completely insane. You will likely die soon. And if you don't, you'll wish that you had. Are you asleep yet? I hurry up. I'm I'm tired too, you know. This may not be the scariest entry on the list, but it is one of the most clever and addictive, Pacman.exe. Listed as a ROM of an apparently damaged game board of Pac-Man, Pac-Man.exe plays similarly to a normal Pac-Man arcade, but with a few major differences, like, I don't know, this guy? Not only do the ghosts have special abilities like the previously shown Blinky, who can now scream charge at you, you also can't kill them. Since you can only see Pac-Man's point of view, the power pellets in the corners no longer make you invincible, they merely allow you to see the entire board briefly. Again, it's not terribly horrifying, but the creepy, haunted, glitch ROM aesthetic is nailed perfectly, and the limited visibility mixed with the sound effects make for some pretty hair-raising and alarming moments. And speaking of sound effects, this looping alarm noise sounds kind of like a police siren. It almost makes me feel like I'm running from something, like Pac-Man is some kind of serial criminal stealing all the red balls he can get his hands on. What do we even need these things for anyways? Alright! I'm doing it! Sheesh. So, um, does it mean you still want these? At number one, I've got Earthbound Halloween Hack. This is an Earthbound hack created by a guy named Toby Fox. You know, the same guy that went on to make Undertale, the critically acclaimed game that sold over a million copies? That alone is a pretty good reason to assume that this hack is solid. Playing the Halloween hack is almost like playing through a fan fiction. Ness X Poo. The story that everyone wanted but was too shy to ask for. Now available in a playable format. No, not like that. Not that kind of fan fiction. Get your head out of the gutter, people. Sheesh! Actually, I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but they're both dead in this universe anyway. Fox took characters and situations from the original game and played them out in this alternate timeline in a realistic and believable way. From the gameplay to the remixed music to the writing, Halloween Hack really nails the overall Earthbound feel, just with even more dark and depressing overtones. If you're an Earthbound fan, this really is a must-play in my opinion. Well, that's my list of the top 10 spooky fan games. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll leave you with this. If Toby Fox can go from making an Earthbound-inspired ROM hack to making Undertale, a game that's inspired millions of people, then you can do it too. Whatever it is that inspires you, whatever you want to make or do, big or small, get out there, make it happen. Do the thing! Inhibition, feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you, only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips Dress yourself in words unspoken Live your life with us wide open Today is where your book begins The rest is still unwritten Or you can just sit around on your butt and watch my videos all day That works with, that works for me Hey everybody, as I mentioned at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Loot Crate. The theme for next month is horror, so if you want to get that Loot Crate, make sure you sign up with the link in the description below, lootcrate.com slash peanutbuttergamer. Uh, the deadline is the 19th, and if you do want to sign up, make sure you use that link, because it helps me out, helps the show out, and uh, yeah. 
let's go ahead and open up this little crate that we got right here. It's speed. Up first, we have the t-shirt. This is an Iron Man 2 uh, themed t-shirt and uh, apparently was made specifically for Loot Crate, so you can't even get it anywhere else. All right, what else we got? We got a, a little uh, car from Gone in 60 Seconds here. I'm gonna open this up. Here's a nice little close-up of it. It reminds me of my Hot Wheels collection I had when I was a kid. Up next, we have something for Batman. This is an exclusive keychain. Get another close-up. No, 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 another close-up. Focus. There we go. So professional here on the peanut butter guy show. Next we have a hoodies collectible auto ornaments. It seems like we can get either the uh, arrow or the flash and we got the flash. And of course we can't forget the uh, loot crate speed themed pin. I always look forward to getting these uh, these pins here. And last but not least we have a Battlestar Galactica figurine here. This is another exclusive. It is the uh, scar uh, is a vinyl replica. <laughs> So yeah, that is the Loot Crate for this month. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, there's other Loot Crate boxes you can get, like Loot Crate DX, Loot Crate Wear, which is like the clothes, the Loot Crate gaming, anime, all that stuff. So make sure you check out Loot Crate. And if you do, use the link in the description below. Again, helps me, helps me buy food and stuff. So that's cool. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. While you're at it, go check out my friend Space Hamster's video on creepy Nintendo fan games that also came out today. Or you can always watch us play Luigi Insanity on PB and Jeff. Follow me on social media, all the links in the description below. See you guys next time. Bye-bye!